All right, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I'm back with another StarCraft 2 1 vs. 1 replay cast. It should be a fantastic one here. It's going to be a Terran vs. Protoss spawning up in the top left hand side of the map. It is Pult. And in the bottom right hand side of the map, it is none other than Root Puck. Both these guys, fantastic players, but. Not going to be uh, focusing too much on StarCraft right out the gate here, as I do have like a bit of an announcement, or I guess an update for you guys regarding the channel. Um, you guys know that I do a lot of StarCraft and StarCraft 2 videos and such, and this isn't this isn't going to be one of those, oh, I'm, I'm going to go play Fortnite or whatever, don't worry about that. No, uh, basically just a small update for you guys that uh, I'm going to be going away for August for uh, work-related things as, as I'm uh, in the military, so... Basically, that means I'll be uh, gone for training for at least till August, and uh, yeah, that'll be uh, something that I'll be doing. Basically, not really able to make videos or anything like that. I'll probably set up a few to be scheduled for the time being, but uh, maybe like one or two. I haven't had a ton of time. I've been running around. I've been crazy, or I've had a lot. It's been craziness, all the things that I've been having to do. So, uh, yeah, basically just uh, trying to keep up to everything, and uh, I'll be going away as of Monday. So I'll try and uh, prepare as many videos as I can. Believe me, I am going to miss the StarCraft, as, uh, I mean, I, I love the game. I'm, I'm going to come back or whatever. I'm going to try and keep an eye on the results and stuff, but I will not be focusing just on the StarCraft while I'm uh, while I'm away. But yeah, I figured I'd let you guys know as opposed to uh, just dropping off the face of the earth like <laughs> some content creators. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, get on uh, into this game here. As uh, I saw this replay, I was like, oh man, this is almost too good to have a bit of a uh, ramble at the start of it. But Puck and Pult, these two guys just uh, doing their thing here. Uh, Nexus on the way for Puck. He's already got his Cybercore done, whereas Pult... Uh, Bolt has that command center on the way, just following it, following up a Reaper expand here. So uh, very, very classic openings. I'm excited to see how the match is going to work out between these two players. Pult and Puck are just so good. Pult going to be coming back into form, whereas Puck he's just been uh, consistent as always. Now the Reaper is going to jump on in. Four Pult is going to set to work on one of these probes. Whether it'll get it, I think it will. That probe, oh man, no. Great micro from Puck. Keeping that probe alive. What a god. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, just another small update regarding, I guess, the tournaments that I'll be uh, running, that I run, say, every couple of weeks or show matches and stuff. Of course, since I'll be away, there's going to be uh, none of those. But I do recommend you guys go back and watch uh, previous ones, like just put up Bomber versus Super. And then a bunch of Afrika World VODs, which uh, just a great StarCraft as always. Now what we've got right now is a Reaper. Going to be looking to uh, jump on in perhaps to Puck's base. There's just a Sentry on guard for him. So this Reaper, no, one Reaper cannot take on a Sentry, I believe. Don't quote me on that 100%, but I'm pretty positive that uh, one Reaper cannot take on a Sentry in a fight. The Sentry just has a bit too much health. And uh, the Reaper does not have a lot of health. Now, looking at this game, we've got a Blink opening from Puck. I am a huge fan of this opening. Like, uh, this opening for Protoss is my... It's it's my favorite opening. That in StarCraft 2. I mean, like, uh, there was, say, the 2 on one for a time, which everyone loved. And I was like, alright, that is an awesome opening. But uh, as far as openings goes in PvT, this opening is just so, so good at the moment for Protoss players, and uh, it just really sets you up in a nice way to play the game. As uh, It's a bit of a reaction to how Terrans go for lots of pushes and such. And speaking of pushes, maybe we'll be seeing one of those for Pult as he's uh, turning out this bio already. He's already got Stim on the way, so going up to three racks before three CC is getting his plus one on the way. This is a very notable development. Already building up a nice chunk of bio and going to continue producing it from uh, here on, I imagine. But uh, yeah, let's take a look here. Few Stalkers gonna be moving out for Puck. Blink is not done yet, so the Cyclone could escape, and good reaction from Pult pulls it away, but uh, long since gone are the days in which like a Stalker would go down to a Cyclone. Players like Puck and just uh, players in general have got very good at pulling back an injured unit when it's just versus, say, one Cyclone, making sure that the lock-on gets broken, the other units force the Cyclone away, 
It's, uh, it's not rocket science for that one. Now, what could be a little dangerous here for Puck is if he goes up this ramp without Blink because Pult is waiting, he is lurking in the shadows here, and oh man, if Puck goes up it, this will be risky. He is going to be waiting for her Blink from the seam of things. Yeah, he's so impatient. He wants to go. He's like, come on, let me go, let me go. But he's going to have Blink just right about now. As I say that, though, Pult does retreat to his bunker. He's actually got some Marines moving up, and oh no, these guys are going to be caught. I think they were going to be trying to pull a sneaky one on Pult, but oh, look at this. We're on Puck, but Puck sniffs this out. This is a lot of dead Marines for nothing. These poor guys, they are in trouble. Now, that's a fair bit of bio supply that is now gone and no longer going to help hold out in pushes or anything or defense versus these stalkers and uh, the bio really snowballs better versus puck so that has been delayed so this is actually uh, pretty nice for puck and allow him to poke and prod a little bit more of course Pult does seem to be playing well except for that little move there we see a third cc on location all the while puck from his opening he saw that Pult was two basing it makes sense to delay your third nexus as the protoss as uh, look at this Puck, he's already uh, got up a Robo Bay on the way, and he's building an Immortal, getting charged. Very important stuff, because you will have to deal with a Terran Bio move out relatively soon. I do love what Puck is doing, though. He's actually poking in from multiple angles with Blink Stalkers. This is some insane StarCraft 2 right here. Taking a look at this as, uh, yeah... Uh, Puck gonna be coming just like, I mean, it's very tough to do, but he has been moving in with just one group of stalkers, getting the bio out of position, then going in with the other. Yeah, look at this. Oh my god, Puck is, Puck is just so, so ballsy for trying this. Now, it would be nice for Puck if he could find this third command center and apply some pressure there. But uh, for now, he is just going to be getting himself some high ground vision. And he's actually planning an attack. What? No. You can't make an attack like this work if you're Puck. He was thinking about it, and I think he is thinking about it, but you can't do it. And oh, there's the first mistake of the game for Puck, really losing that warp prism. That really hurts. Now, that being said, though, Stalkers, since Puck had multiple groups, this one group is going to go on in. And Pult is moving across the map. He lost a medivac, though. And uh, t this is actually a nice attack here for Puck. He's getting on into Pult's natural. Pult is going to be losing SCVs. The supply is equal. But uh, Pult going to have a tough time cleaning this up. Has to pull more SCVs into the fight. Looks like he will send these Stalkers packing. And actually is going to pick them all off from the seam of things, which is very nice. And look at this. Pult going to be pushing on into the natural of Puck. And Puck might be a little bit overcommitted here. He's going to have a Colossus popping in a second, which will really help him out. He's got his charge upgrade finished, but he really needs out some charge lots in order to help out with this fight. He warps in a stalker, but I don't know if that's the right choice in this situation. He has a few stalkers, and they have to dodge the bio with Pult. So that was a little bit dicey there for Puck, but he is keeping things alive. He does have those Colossus on the way. Whoops, I did not mean to rewind there, guys. That was a mistake. I meant to press, uh, to press uh, the G there to check that there is indeed no extended thermal lance on the way for Puck as he's doing a million things right now. And uh, he's still on a pretty good economy. But Pult is securing his third base. Puck forces Pult back, and the game will go on from here. Now, uh, let's see. Pult, his production is starting to ramp up, and this is this is a good game to gauge where Pult is at. He doesn't seem to be making any major mistakes. He's floating a bit of money here, which is a little bit concerning, and he's not producing units. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Pult's still improving at the game here after coming back from retirement but i mean he's already looking so so good it's just little little things that every pro player makes now let's take a look here puck just sort of holding in his third base doing the classic protoss thing which you're like i don't want to die so i'm going to make all the units try and defend all my locations he's got stalkers to prevent a drop in this location and then the bulk of his force at this location he does start extended thermal lance which is just so so important and he also throws down two forges so he's going to be able to begin catching up in the upgrades because it is important to note that there is a significant upgrade lead here for Pult. he's got one one versus zero zero for the protoss and that can be over can i can be uh it's not insurmountable per se as a uh, puck is building up Colossus still and say if he can get up to three Colossus he'll be feeling real good but uh, yeah let's take a look here uh, Pult gonna be moving on in once again this army supply is relatively even this attack is gonna be spotted to the north and uh, let's take a look a hallucination uh, a hallucinated Phoenix gonna be spotting some of this army as well spots the third base Puck immediately throws up a Stargate already 
which is an interesting development. I don't know if he saw the fusion core, perhaps, or saw liberators. Yeah, I think he might must have. Yeah, he did see the fusion core and did see the starport. So he knows liberators are going to be on the way, and that's in the back of his mind. But look at this pocket starting to move out, and oh, this could be a massive mistake here for the Protoss if he's not careful. Look at this. Polt's coming on in. He's going to chase down this army. Polt even pulls the SCVs, realizing how dire the situation is. Centuries have tossed down force fields, but they haven't completely prevented this battle. But look at that. A fantastic wall, though, is actually preventing most of it. A bit of the bio snuck through, but not all of it, and that allows Puck to buy himself time to get a recall off. And look at that, since Pult prematurely pulled the SCVs, and he lost 20 there, which is no small amount. Fantastically done by Puck. And let's take a look. Medivac's gonna be loading on up here for Pult. Gonna be uh, boosting down from the SEMA things. Just uh, trying to hit in multiple locations when you realize you can't engage the Protoss directly. You start to go for other other moves that you can do, like a drop with the bow, like trying to pull your opponent out of position. And that was something that Pult was a was just a master at sniping off Nexus left and right. He was he was known for that. Pult, the Nexus sniper. He even has an emote on his Twitch, which is literally just a Nexus being like denied or whatever. I think. Now uh, let's take a look. Pult comes on in, actually just denies that Nexus there. Speak of the devil. Puck is trying to secure a fourth, Pult not wanting him to. It's important to note that the upgrades are now equal for the time being. Pult trying to uh, split his army. A lot of that going on this game. And uh, we'll see where it's going to end up as uh, Pult is still up on supply. He's got himself a pretty decent economy, lots of mules and such. He's even throwing up his own fourth base location. Not uh, not on the base, so playing it a little bit safe in that regard. You can never be too careful about zealot counterattacks. And nice move using these two liberators to chase down this prism is a big deal. But look at this. The uh, plus two attack does finish for Pult, so he once again will have an upgrade lead. However, with the Chrono Boost for Puck, he can potentially catch up. And look at this, Puck catching a nice bit of Pult's army, and Pult is a little bit slow to react there, so losing an extra medivac or two, bit of a mistake there. He's pulling in the rest of his army, and the reason why he got distracted there was because these guys are engaging on multiple fronts here. And let's take a look. The 2-2 is on the way for Puck. He's getting up Psystorm. He's restarted this fourth base. Even getting cannons and a shield battery to defend, and he's also getting Tempest already planning on dealing with the mass liberator count that Pult has been planning to achieve. And the Tempest are absolutely excellent at that. Now we take a look though at the supply, everything being uh, accounted. It's actually uh, still a pretty even game here. Pult does have an upgrade lead for now. There's a chance that he can catch Puck off guard since Puck is splitting his armies. But look at that, looks like he might be planning on grouping these up. He's getting Psystorm out on the way. He's already warped in six High Templar, which are just an absolutely massive amount. And uh, when a Protoss has six High Templar, you've got to be very, very careful as a Terran. And look at this. In comes Puck in the center of the map, maybe trying to breach this location. Both these guys are going to be approaching Max out soon. Pult, when he approaches Max out, you generally want to go for the fight as the Terran. But that being said, some Terrans are more willing to try the late game than before. And look at this, a counterattack going to be going in for Puck. Going to be getting this Warp Prism in. No Warpins going down so far. There we are, a big chunk of Zealots getting warped on in. Six in total. This Bio is getting into position already to help out. It still has the upgrade lead, so that means the Zealots do die reasonably quick. The Prism, though, goes into the main base to continue being a pain. The Cyclone in the main base sleeping on the job, not helping out. We do see the Liberators are going to be moving on forward for Puck. He's going to be trying to choke or Holt, he's going to be trying to choke Puck out. I, I knew that this would be a tough one to cast, guys, when uh, I saw these two guys' names. But look at this. Once again, a nice concave going down for Holt, but great force fields for Puck. Save him. We take a look, though, and suddenly Puck's out of position. Holt's running towards his base. But take a look here. There's Tempest out. There is uh, lots of High Templar. Are, is there going to be any size storm? Puck, you got to drop the storms. Get some fantastic storms on the Liberators, really softening them up. Just using all of his size storm there on all of his uh, on all of his High Templar there. That's actually it for size storm. But take a look. Puck is going to be base trading right now. SCVs are starting to fall. Holt is just going to have to try and hold on. But once again, base trades never base trade a Terran. They say Puck is going to be doing everything he can. He's got a few Tempests doing whatever they can, which is actually probably pretty all right versus the Marauders. A recall goes down, and it does actually finish in time. Is Puck going to be able to clean up this army, though? This is not all of his force that he has here versus this bio, and he has to respect these Liberators, even though they're softened up. The Tempest still have to take the time to pick them off, 
and he will be doing just that. Meanwhile, we see the rest of the army for Puck going to be coming on back. This is reached to a scrappy situation, but looks like Polk going to be losing a good chunk of his army, losing most of his liberators here. This is an absolutely fantastic move by the Protoss player, catching these units. Every single one is valuable. Medivacs and all getting picked off, and we take a look here. Puck. Polt, he lost his third base. He actually has another command center that's ready, so his economy isn't disastrous yet thanks to the power of mules and that extra base he has, but we're already seeing an engagement potentially going down here. Liberator's getting set on up, but Puck backs out. His spell casting is so good, dropping those force fields once again, and the Liberators, they just do not win out versus Tempest. They can't even really attack Tempest. It's probably one of the biggest range discrepancies in the game. Liberators have no range. Tempest have all the range. Uh, when they are not sieged, or Liberators have no range when they're when they're uh, not sieged up. And let's take a look, Polt moving out on the map with this army, but it's just so much for Puck here, and it is looking good for the Protoss player right now. These Tempest going to be moving on north. Puck is, or Polt, is trying to make whatever he can. He's starting to build up a Viking count. And Vikings are never a bad thing because they actually... Uh, they counter the Colossus and the Tempest, so that's basically a 2 and one They do have to respect the High Templar, though, which don't have a counter until there's Ghosts out, which there is not. And now we take a look here. Fourth base is on the, or fifth base is on the way for Puck, so he's doing very well in that regard. Meanwhile, Polt going to be moving out with this small chunk of bio. His economy and just, yeah, his economy just hasn't been enough. He lost too many SCVs, it would seem, and he's taking more of a blow. So Polt taking a small engagement here down to the south. An engagement to the north here. It looks like Puck is going to have been able to do it. It's just too much here. And uh, yeah, we take a look at the supply. It is not good for Polt. He's just running around kind of like a chicken with his head cut off. There's so much Protoss. He's got the Liberators, which will buy time. But I mean, uh, it's kind of checkmate when there's this many Tempest and High Templar to, pr to protect him. There goes down some Psy Storm. The Liberators trying to trying to uh, do what they can. The Vikings trying to sneak around and pick off the Tempest, but let's take a look at the count here. Six Tempest versus eight Vikings is not a good sign for the Terran. And oh, look at this. Puck knows he's got this game. He's throwing up pylons on the front line. I don't know, I don't know if this is BM or just good gameplay here. Is uh, Who knows? Maybe he'll throw up shield batteries or something with that. He's even got the Oracle tagging the army. He's like, I, I think I've killed this Terran. I think Polt is done here. An engagement potentially going to be going down, but Polt knows that he can't engage into these High Templar. They will just massacre the Terran army as they have been doing for years. And look at this. Income the uh, High Income the Zealots going to be slaughtering what's left of Polt's economy. Puck is just doing what he needs to do. Polt is going to be able to clean this up, sure, but it is, just, it is just not enough here. This is one dead Terran player. The Vikings pick off a Tempest, but they eat some nasty side storm. The Tempest return the favor, and uh, yeah, Puck is just going to steamroll Polt here. Polt is dead. I mean, uh, we see Polt maybe going for a counterattack, but there's just too much Protoss at this point in the supply. It's a 70 supply lead here for Puck, and uh, that ain't good for Polt. That is not good. He doesn't have the Vikings that he needs to engage into this. The Stalkers are going to blink underneath. They will take care of the Liberators. Or they should do. Uh, they're, they're hesitating a bit. They're really trying to throw. Oh my god, that Liberator is a champ. But uh, in the end, I mean, Polt, he's going to be able to pick off this Nexus, which is good with the supply. He's just so far behind. He's losing orbital commands. Puck recalls. Once he squashes this army, I think that's probably going to be it for the Protoss. Where did Puck recall to? There we go, this location. All he needs to do is snipe off the Medivacs and there's no escape, and he's going to do just that from the Seam of Things. The Medivacs escape, but they uh, are going to be leaving their bio from the Seam of Things. Uh, some pylons getting unpowered. A nice move there for Polt. But Puck still has many functioning bases, but GG gets called. There we go, it's over. Puck manages to take down Polt who is uh, still fairly fresh from uh, coming out of, I guess, retirement or hiatus from being in the military. Anyway, thanks so much to you guys for watching this one versus one replay cast. That's just uh, a bit of an update there as far as uh, what's going to be going on with the channel and stuff. And I really hope you guys did enjoy this game because I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.